Yeah, that shouldn't be a thing still, should it? Hey, it's Dan, and welcome back to Unified Gaming. In today's video, guys, we're going to look at the Bodard Mark II. That's right, the Bodard Mark II. I have taken the previous build and just made it better in like all areas. We have more damage, we have better sustain, and we move significantly faster, which means we can stay alive a lot easier. All in all, this build should be bad. It is like so, so broke. But we're going to share it anyway, because I'm hoping that Zoz will kind of see this kind of build video, hear the complaints, and then we'll hopefully change things. And if not, you can have fun in the meantime. But before we jump into that build, if you haven't guessed it, this channel is all about helping you unleash your potential with next level builds, guides and gameplay. So why not start improving today by subscribing and clicking on the bell so you don't miss anything. Now let's jump straight in. Now looking at our race guys, I would recommend being an orc on this build if you are after the biggest kind of tooltip that you will see the biggest damage that you can land on somebody. That's because you get extra stamina which basically increases our damage further. We also get extra weapon damage, which obviously increases our damage further. And we have a bit of health, which means we're a little bit harder to kill. Having a slightly larger health pool means we're not as squishy as we would be otherwise. And this also works really well with the vampire skills that we now embrace. The more health we have, the longer we can keep the skills active for, thus getting more damage. But other races do work really well. I've tested Dark Health, and that is almost identical to an Orc. So if you want a bit of easier sustain with Magicka, especially, go for Dark Health. I've also tested Wood Elf, Khajiit, and also an Argonian, and I found that Wood Elf, yes, it hit less, the speed you get is nice, and the sustain is really, really nice. And that's also true for things like Red Guard and a Khajiit. But in kind of just sheer damage, it went with Orc, then Dark Elf, then Khajiit, then Wood Elf, in that order, okay? With all of those races, though, we actually used the Shadow Mundus. So I've paired them up, and I've tried the Shadow, the Lover, and the Warrior. And from testing, I found that the Shadow, even with people having 4,000 crit resist, so that's full imp and the 1350 you get from being in PvP now, they still took most damage from the Shadow. And the target I was testing it against was somebody who had 24k resistance and then they had 28k resistance. So kind of a typical target you'll get in PvP. They had optimized CP as well by myself. So all in all, the Shadow was just the best Mundus to run. Yes, your tooltips look slightly less. Yes, you don't have as much penetration. But because of the crit bonus and how it works, we just get more damage on the target. And that's what this is about. It's not about trying to get fancy stat pages or just fancy tooltips. It's about hitting the target really, really hard. And this Mindstone does that regardless of race. So we'll definitely go with the Shadow. And then for our consumables, guys, I would recommend using our Taeyeon Takeaway Broth if you want max stats and stand region. If you're just after sheer damage, but which Sugar Skulls is really, really good. And the extra Magicka makes it easier to kind of play this kind of build, in all honesty. Because we are really, really reliant on Cloak and just moving around to stay alive. So this is a really good option here. But as I said, this is really good for stamina to sustain if you find that difficult to manage. Especially in Battlegrounds. And then for the potions, it's Tri-Stat potions. If you're out of stamina, you're going to die. It's simple. And if you're out of Magicka, well, you're going to die anyway because you can't escape and health, you get the idea. So this just kind of covers all bases that if we're low on any resource pool, which means we could die, this just fixes that problem. Now I've been asked this an awful lot, should you be a vampire on the bow gank? And well, yes, the Botard should embrace the vampirism, especially in Greymore, there's just so much to gain from it. Now in the vampire kind of rework in Greymore, there's new skills, which are pretty cool in all honesty. The passives are really helpful. So this passive is incredibly useful. It gives us 300 weapon damage, and well, as you can see on our character sheet, we're on the 3788. What about on stealth? What back on stealth? 4163. Rally. Even higher. What about stealth? You get it. You can also proc it with cloak as well, so we can say in stealth and just tap cloak. When the cloak pops off, we then get the buff, so you can see it's in 543, get the idea. And as you can see, it's crazy. That's before Titanborn and all that good stuff. So yeah, really, really good there. So that's one of the main reasons to be a vampire. The second reason is this passive here. This is a like game changer, so you really need to run this. Basically, you can sneak around for kind of with no snare, because when you sneak normally, you get like a really, really hefty snare attached to you. And you also get to get into sneak a bit quicker, 50% faster at all times. So when we tap it, we can sneak down really quick. Look at that. So, so much faster to enter cloak, which is just really helpful. So, we can use this, tap sneak as well. When that runs out, we're still hidden. So, that's just really, really useful in PvP, especially when it's not lagging. 
as for this passive, as I've said, it's a really good passive, you have to be stage two. So stage three is for like this one here and this one here, but the downsides, as you can see, get quite hefty. Stage two, we've already got less than 30% health recovery. We're taking 8% more fire damage and our skills cost 5% more than normal. So it means that it's really hard to sustain beyond stage two. Stage three is like really, really pushing it. And all, all, like, all the game is this, so it's not worth it. Stage two is the sweet spot. And then the skill, we'll obviously go through this in a little bit. Now, the part that I think is really important is the skills. If you get this right and you get the gear, you can do really, really well. If you get the skills right, even with kind of just iffy gear, you're still going to do really well. So pay really close attention to this as we've changed a few things to give you a bit more of an advantage in PvP. So on the front bar, we still have Lethal Arrow. I've tested the other morph. This was still better overall because nine times out of 10, you kill them regardless of morph that you have. And in the times that you don't, you get the minor defile, which really stops people healing up quickly. So you've got a good chance of landing Silver Shard. So you want to have Lethal Arrow as the kind of the main spammable. Silver Shard is just a really good skill to have. It hits harder than Poison Injection, so definitely get the skill. We still use Camouflaged Hunter. We don't actually cast it though. It's mainly here because we get minor Berserk if we attack from the flank, which is kind of shoulder to shoulder. So if you're unaware, anywhere from kind of where that box is over there, all the way to kind of over here where the kind of tree is, is our flank. Anybody hits us from any of this kind of semicircle, they will proc the Minor Berserk if they had Camouflage Hunter. And that's the same for us too. So generally, if you're behind the target, you will proc this and the damage that you get on this actually applies to the first hit too, which is really, really cool. So it means you don't have to run Slime Claw. You get the kind of the bonus damage if you use the skill correctly, i.e. attack from behind the target. We then have Blood Frenzy and we can choose which morph. So I'm gonna go through both in a second, but this is the Vampire Toggle. We still use Cloak, obviously. Cloak gives us a guaranteed crit chance, so the idea is that if we hit Snipe, just before the arrow lands, we hit Cloak, that arrow will be a guaranteed crit no matter what. And we run Incapacitate and Strike. And a lot of you go, why don't you run the bow, like the bow ultimate, or why don't you run Dawnbreaker? And if you go to Assassination, there's a passive at the bottom called Hemorrhage, which is like really, really important. In order to access this, you need a skill slotted. So it could be any of these five skills, or this skill here. And lots of people go, well, run piercing mark. But if you put this on somebody, they know that you're about to snipe them and they will hit block or roll dodge or do something and you've missed your snipe. So it's better to have this ultimate. And then if things do go south, we can still hit somebody with this. It hits really hard. So let's put on our buffs. This is before any sets and skills get active. It's 19,000. Vampire toggle, 21,000. When we proc one of our sets, it goes up even higher. You see the idea, our damage gets like really, really, really high. This goes to about 24, 25k damage, so it's a really hard hitting skill. Our sniper goes up to 22,000 damage, so between this and this, we can kill people. And this obviously gives us access to this passive, as I've said. Now, the thing that people are really curious about is which morph to use, the vampire tool. So as you saw, if I tap it, it drains health. The health is going down, and I'm getting access to this weapon damage. But the longer this is active, the more health it consumes. So you see that cost is going up and up and up until it turns itself off. So this is a really nice feature that you can't kill yourself with it. But if you forget to turn it off and you fail your snipe, you are left, as you can see in a moment, with like 2000 health. Literally a light attack can kill you. So the, the toggle is now off. And if someone lights attack me, I'll die if I don't heal myself. So that's really important just to be careful with this. The skill is also not on the global cooldown, which means you can kind of tap the skill, cloak, skills off. So I can kind of tap it mid animation on another skill. Tap cloak, push the skills on as well. So even though it plays the animation, I can turn it on and off kind of on demand. So don't be kind of afraid to turn it off quickly if you don't need to. So then as for those morphs going, what do I pick morph wise? I've got the vampire bit. I have a choice of this one, basically gives us more damage, or this one, which just heals us partly. From testing on sort of PTS and then also on live, so I've used this on the Greymore live server for about a week now on PCEU. I found, in all honesty, that we hit hard enough as it is, we don't actually need this kind of morph. This is just extra damage. If you want to have really fancy tooltips, run this. But for practicality, run this morph, it's much better. So it, basically, this heals us for some of the damage that we take. So the idea is that if we put this on now, we're on 25,000 health, so we're going down still. 
and the hill will bring us up to about half health so it'll give us about seven eight k health back which is really really helpful so it means that we don't actually have to touch it there we go up to 7900 health so we don't actually have to kind of touch the skill to turn it off we can just tap it leave it on fire and forget kind of thing and then if we don't land the kill we are not going to be kind of a one-shot kill so that's the move i would recommend is sated fury and in all honesty it's slightly easy to use the other one is very nice though for big hits on the back bar we've changed a few things again so we keep race against time this is just our movement buff and it's minor force which is crit damage we have deep thoughts to fix our sustain issues so although our sustain looks low on the stat page we get access to this skill which gives us 1900 stamina every second which basically is like 3800 stamina regen if we sit in this skill which is awesome and it gives us major protection whilst we're in it it's a really really good skill to have really kind of fixes a lot of the sustain issues I've then slotted in Leech and Strikes for a very, very special reason, which I'm going to go through in a second. We then have Concealed Weapon, which is kind of extra movement speed when we're sneaking around. And we have Rally as well. Rally is our kind of burst deal, it's minor brutality, which increases our weapon damage. You could drop this for potions if you prefer, and then run a, like the Shade if you really want, but you don't have to. And then you've got Temporal Regard to give us minor protection on the back bar, making us nice and tanky should things go wrong. And if you really want, which somebody has kind of played around with one of my mates on our Discord server, he's actually used this skill and he's morphed it into this one that gives you basically minor fall, a major fall, sorry. So the idea is that he uses this before he snaps to get like a massive damage boost, which you can do, but you have to use potions if you do that. So for me, I prefer just having a 2H for Rally. He uses potions, but if you want a bit more damage, do you use this skill here, okay? But those are the skills, and as I said, Leech and Strikes is very special. So as I sneak around, my stamina is going down slowly, really, really slowly, because of CP, skills, and so on. But it's going down nevertheless, and if we did this for a long time, we'll be out of stamina eventually. So what I've done is put Leech and Strikes on. If we tap this, then we sneak. Now I'm going to just sneak around for 20 seconds or so, and as I'm doing it, my stamina is being drained. I'm not going to use any skill, and I'd recommend doing this in PvP too. So if you're going from like point A to point B, don't tap any skill apart from this one skill, Leech and Strikes. And when it runs out, tap it again. So it's about to run out and my stamina goes push back to full. Push it again. This way we can keep our stamina pull at 100% by the time we find an enemy and kill them. So it just means that way you're not always kind of half empty when you get to the fight, which always happened in the last build. It was really, really annoying. So this just really fixes that problem and it's about to go up once more. And then we'll go through the gear in a second. So there you go, back to 100% stamina. So that's the skills, guys. All the kind of options here. I would recommend keeping this on the front bar if you use it. If you don't want to use the vampire toggle, then you can just run any fighter skill ability as an option too, just for passive kind of really damage, because you get access to this passive down here, which gives us more damage. So you could run barb trap, uh, sorry, barbed trap if you really, really want. Now, before we jump into the gear and stuff, guys, if you are liking this video, then do leave a like, comment, share. It really helps it out. And if you haven't done so already, do subscribe as we post regular ESO content all aimed at helping you get better. Now, for that gear, we use New Moon Bow, Tente's Greatsword, One Krog, Five Titanborn, and we have the Speed Ring, which is a new mythic item. As for kind of how we set it up, we use a weapon damage cliff. This basically gives us more damage overall from testing. The second, the third and the fourth hit will hit harder with this cliff active. Whereas a foulness cliff would only prop once and it gives us kind of a bit more burst, but we don't get enough damage to kill somebody. Potentes gives us just extra mitigation on the back bar. So the idea is that if we get kind of don't kill somebody, we make a mistake, we get ambushed. This just helps us stay alive a little bit easier than it would otherwise. As for the traits, it can be whatever you like in all honesty. Defendant is the best if you want to kind of stay alive. Besides, works really nice for heals. So does Powered. So there's a few options there. The Glyph can be whatever you like in all honesty. You could even run Poisons if you so wish. As for kind of how the armor and stuff is set up, this is how I've done it, but you could tweak it to save you a bit of gold if you want. I've gone with one Krag, which is just the best damage monster set I've found from testing. I've tested Balorg, Kina, Veladrif. One Piece Krag is more damage overall on the target and all of our CP has been optimized with this in mind. So if you do change this, you'll get less damage and the CP won't be as good. So just keep this on. We want to go with stamina on all of the pieces and want them all to be divines. 
ideally gold if you can, but purple is absolutely fine. The main thing to gold is this bow. You then want to have stamina, as I've said on all of these pieces here. But the thing that's really important is that we have a new moon shoulder this time. We only use one monster set, and we don't actually have a full monster set either. So we drop the Kino or the Balog that used to be here, and we now run the Speed Ring instead. If you're unsure how to get this, I do have a video coming up very soon showing you how to get Mythic items really, really quick. Honestly, it's really easy. It looks hard, and especially with how other people have explained it. But I got this item once I got my level 7 in like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, so it's really quick to get. I can get the skill and up in like 4 hours, which is what I did to level 7, so yeah, it's really easy to get this item. We then have two new moon jewelry pieces and all of the jewelry is infused and weapon damage. If you're somebody who goes, I don't have the money to make this gold or to get this, purple is fine. And if you don't have the money to do any of that, you could go and get Titanborn on here, the Titanborn necklace and ring, and then have an extra two pieces of new moon on the body somewhere. But that's how I set this up. And I do have another build coming up very soon, which is another sniper, but it has way better sustain for slightly less damage, which in all honesty for me, is much better to play. Now, as for the CP guys, like with all of my builds, I min max it kind of down to T just to make it as easy to understand, but also to be highly, highly effective. So go through, pause it where you see fit. The key thing in this middle one, in the lover, so the thief part, you want to get wind running just for a bit more movement speed. It's really, really nice, especially in sneak. You want to have a bit in shade just to get a bit of sneak reduction. All of these are fine. All of these are fine. Pearson's been min maxed with our Titanborn in mind, so do factor that in. If you change Titanborn or Krag, you'll kind of need to adjust this. We also have four points spare, which you can honestly chuck wherever you like. So whatever you think you'll get most benefit, just bear in mind that 1.97% will round down to 1%. It's really silly how it works. And I do have kind of a guide in my Discord channel kind of how to do this if you want to know how to do it properly and quickly. As for the red CP, this is getting all min maxed. This has been min-maxed to take into account the 1350 that we get from just being a PvP now. So 61 is what you want for the jump point. We then have all of these, optimize. This is really important to get, so try and get the skill if you can. This basically means that our rally is free to cast once we get sort of stunned. So if you get stunned, roll dodge and cast rally, and then you'll get the big burst health for pretty much no stamina. So it's a really good way to kind of get out of trouble. And we have a few spare points in quick recovery, which you could move if you really want, but I'll keep them there. Now the final thing I like to go through in all of my videos is just general tips and tricks and things that will help you get better on the build to just get much more success. Now for me what I found is that the biggest thing in order to do damage is not landing just one skill but trying to land at least two skills together. So the biggest thing that I found works really well is doing snipe, light attack, silver shard. So you could do cloak before that, cloak after that, so snipe, cloak, light attack, silver shard or snipe, light attack, silver shard, cloak or cloak, snipe, silver shard light attack you get the idea and that lands really really hard and it's kind of like a good medium combo it doesn't one shot people but it does a good 15 to 20k burst which is a lot of damage and then if you want to kind of really nuke somebody you can go snipe snipe silver shard or snipe snipe light attack silver shard and then if you get rushed you want to attack somebody at point blank you can go cloak snipe in cap and as snipes put them back then cast in cap they will land together light attack silver shard and you'll one shot most people anybody with around 24k health will die instantly. If you are wanting to use the vampire topple to just really push your damage, the combos were exactly the same, but you just tap the vampire skill before the combo. So you go with um, State of Fury, Snipe, Light Attack, Silver Shard, or State of Fury, Snipe, Snipe, Light Attack, Silver Shard, and you'll hit really, really hard. So those are the main offensive combos. Now, in order to stay alive on this build, it's really, really simple. All you have to do is basically focus on keeping your movement good. So if you're moving around, being unpredictable, so not always sitting behind a rock or sitting by a corner of a wall, because that's where people expect the snipe to be, but maybe going into kind of more of just the open area, kind of where nobody would expect you to be, you will find that you'll generally have kind of a good way to kind of retreat. So that's just a kind of little tip there. The second thing that I do is also move and kind of line of sight. So the idea being that if someone's chasing me, I might do like L shape. So I might run forward, turn L, a cloak, or run forward, roll to the right, and then cloak, or I might even do a 180 and go bar like behind the target. So that'll work really, really well. The last thing you can do, which generally works best most of the time, and actually just going really, really offensive. 
that if somebody rushes you, snipe into Silver Shard hits really, really hard. Uh, to the point that will have to retreat 9 times out of 10. Uh, you're going to land anywhere from 12 to 16,000 damage within you know, a second. Most people can't afford to land, you know, to kind of have that twice in a row because you just kill them. So you can go snipe, light attack, Silver Shard. If they don't retreat, then go for the same combo again and you'll probably kill them. Or you can go to snipe in cap and that will stun them and it will probably kill them, followed by a light attack silver shard. And again, that will work really well. So part of staying alive in this build is actually being quite offensive. The downside though is the sustain can be a bit eh, but we've obviously fixed some of that with leech and strike, so do chuck in some light attacks in order to get some stamina back if you need. But those are the main things in order to kind of help you guys out. And if you are still here, then I want to say a massive thank you to obviously watching the video this long. It really helps it out. So why not leave a like and comment and consider sharing it with somebody else because other people get lots and lots of benefit from this. And if you really love what we do and you really want to support us, then consider donating on our Patreon where obviously those people are really helping us make YouTube a reality. They're helping us with the website, which is obviously still being developed. And all in all, which just means that doing this is much, much more easier. So really big thank you to all of those guys. And if you want to help us, as I've said, there is a link in the description. But this video is long enough as it is. So with that said, guys, I am going to wrap it up here. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye.